All right, this is AP BC Calculus. We're doing a BC only unit. This is unit 10, section one, uh, defining convergent and divergent infinite series. So let's get to some vocab real quick. In unit 10, we're gonna learn many methods to determine if an infinite series, meaning a sum of infinite terms, converges or diverges. So let's learn what those two words mean first. So first thing, the nth partial sum of a series means the sum of the first n terms in a series, okay? So there might be infinite terms, but we're only looking at the first n of them, like the first five or the first 10 or the first two. A convergent series uh, or a series that converges uh, means that the limit of the partial sums of the infinite series as n gets very large is a single finite number. So essentially it's saying that the infinite terms sum to one single finite number. And that could be a big finite number like a million or it could be a small finite number like two uh, or it could be a negative seven, but it's a single finite number. Uh, so, so the sum of the first uh, million terms and the sum of the first billion terms and the sum of the first, uh, I don't know, like eight billion terms, all of them seem to be converging to a single finite number. Uh, a divergent series or a series that diverges uh, is a series that does not converge. So essentially there's a bunch of different ways this can happen, but, but the thing I just described for convergent series does not happen. Uh, usually what this means is one of two things. Either the sum is an infinite value, right? Like all of the numbers would add to something infinite or the sum uh, does not converge to a single finite value. So uh, we'll see an example of that in just a second. And, and again, we're gonna spend an entire unit doing this, uh, but here's the idea. So let's do a quick review of pre-calc. Let's find the indicated partial sum. So if I use this notation, right, the sigma notation, right, what S sub four is gonna mean is it means I add the first four terms. So I'm gonna start with plugging in I is one, so that's a one squared, right, that's when I is one, plus then I do I is two, right, uh, plus when I is three, plus when i is four, right? So that this would be the, the first four terms, right? That's why that's s sub four. Uh, so I'm gonna get that this is a one plus a four plus a nine uh, plus a 16, right? And I'm pretty sure that we get that that's a 30. All right, so uh, go ahead and try p1, the same idea. You're gonna do a quick review of pre-calc, right? You're gonna find s sub three. So that means the sum of the first three terms. The first term is one over one. The second term is one over two, because k would be two, and the third term is one over three. Uh, now this one's a little trickier just because you need to get a common denominator, right? I see that the easiest common denominator is sixes. So that's six over six, uh, three over six, and a two over six. So I'm pretty sure I get that that's 11 sixths. Okay, so that's the, the third partial sum for that infinite series. So here's an example of a series that diverges or a divergent series. So the, the sum from i is one to infinity of just i, right? Um, so that means that, and this is the index uh, of summation, right? So, so we start, that's what the letter uh, i is in this case, and I said it's a k, sometimes it's an n, but uh, in this case it's an i. So I start by plugging in one, so that's the first term, then I plug in i is two, so second term, i is three, third term, i is four, fourth term and fifth term and so on. Let's look at the partial sum. So the, the first partial sum is literally just the first term. It's just a one. The second partial sum is the first two terms. So one plus two is three. The third partial sum would be one plus two plus three. So one plus two plus three is six. The fourth partial sum would be one plus two plus three plus four, which is 10. The fifth partial sum would be one plus two plus three plus four plus five, which is 15. And as you can see, these numbers are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Like these are getting bigger right? And they're going to keep getting bigger. The sum is infinite. So this is a series that diverges, right? It's not approaching a single finite number. That's a divergent series. Another way something can diverge is if it oscillates back and forth. So here I have the sum uh, from one to infinity of a negative one to the i power. So that's when I plug in i is one, I'm going to get a negative one, right? This is when i was one. When I plug in i is two, I'm going to get a positive one and then and so on. So if I find my sum, the sum of uh, just the first term, right, is just the first term by itself, it's a negative one. The sum of the second term will be negative one plus one, well that's a zero. The sum of the third term will be negative one plus one minus one, that's a negative one. The sum of the next term is negative one plus one minus one plus one again, hey, that's a zero, and so on. So this sum is gonna oscillate between two finite values. Negative one is a finite value, zero is a finite value, but the sums oscillate between them, that's not a single finite value, thus this thing diverges. And again, we're gonna learn a lot more about how these work as we move through this unit, but I wanted to give an introduction and show you samples of what convergent and divergent series look like. So here's a convergent series. Uh, we'll address geometric series more in the next video, 10-2, uh, but here's a sample of a convergent series. Specifically, this is geometric where the R is one half. So this series converges to two, 
Uh, but most of the time, we won't know what value a series converges to. We only know that it converges. This one happens to converge to a specific value. So here I start at i is 0, and I do uh, a 1 half to the i power, right? So when I plug in 0 for i, I get 1 half to the 0, which is 1. When I plug in uh, 1 for i, I get 1 half to the first. When I plug in 2 for i, I get a 1 half squared, which would be a 1 fourth, and so on. So my s sub 0, right, the s, the, the, the first term by itself, essentially, right, to the i is 0 term was just a 1, and s sub 1 would be 1 plus 1 half, which is 3 halves, and s sub 2 would be 1 plus 1 half plus 4, uh, 1 fourth rather, which is 7 fourths, uh, and so on, right? So what you're going to see is these numbers get closer and closer to 2. Right, and and you could see that if you write this out as decimals, this is a one point, uh, is a one a one point five, right? This would be a one point seven five. Uh, this is probably something like a one point, what would be one two five, right? So uh, eight seven five, right? Uh, and I don't really feel like doing this one, but this is only one sixteenth shy of. So they're getting closer and closer to two. So um so so this is a series that converges. Again, in this case, it converges to a specific value that we know what it converges to. That's not going to happen for us in most series. We're just going to be able to say converge or diverge, not a specific numerical value. All right. And then if we look at this last slide here, uh, so determining whether series converge or diverge is essentially about working through a checklist of convergence and divergence tests. Um, in each video in Unit 10, we're going to address some of those tests. Uh, specifically, we're going to address a lot of them right about up to uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, right about here is where we'll be determining a lot of convergence and divergence. And then starting at 10.10 and later we'll do a little bit of different stuff that is also still related uh, to these concepts but aren't just about testing convergence and divergence. So that's kind of your intro to Unit 10.